Hello everyone, welcome back to Studio Technologies. Today we'll be building a six axis robot arm using mostly 3D printed parts. In this video, we'll be going over the robot specifications as well as the design and construction of joints four, five, and six. Let's get started. When I first sat down to work on this arm, I laid out five requirements to help me with the design of the arm. First requirement, the robot must have six degrees of freedom. This way, it can reach a single point within its configuration space from multiple orientations. Requirement number two, I wanted the end effector of the robot to be modular. Rather than designing an end effector that's good at one specific task, I wanted to build a general purpose robot and have modular end effectors so it could be good at multiple tasks instead of just one. Requirements three and four define the physical design of the robot by specifying a 500 millimeter reach, which is about 20 inches, and a one kilogram payload, which is about 2.2 pounds. These numbers are arbitrary and were just something I came up with to give me a decent robot arm that's capable of accomplishing a wide variety of tasks. Lastly, I wanted the arm to be primarily 3D printed. Machining metal parts is very expensive and time consuming. By having a 3D printer, I can rapidly prototype many of the parts that I'll need for this project at a relatively cheap cost. Once the requirements were laid out, I began researching different robotic arms and their constructions as inspiration for where to start my design. From my research, I found four robotic arms that really caught my attention. The IRB 1100 by ABB Robotics, the KUKA Agilis arm, the Walter arm, and the Atlas arm. The first two are industrial robots, and the last two are hobbyist designs. These arms helped me figure out the mechanical design and aesthetics I wanted to go for for my own project. To learn more about these robots, you can find links to them in the description below. Now that we've gone over the requirements and inspirations for the project, let's jump into Fusion 360 and discuss the mechanical design. Here we have the tentative design for joints four, five, and six for the robot. Starting with joint six, we have a NEMA 17 stepper motor that directly controls the rotation for this joint. This joint is simple and didn't require much design work. The enclosure for this motor is where the timing belt gear for joint five gets attached. On the opposite side, we have an opening to allow the motor cables to pass through. For joint 5, we have a slightly bigger NEMA 17 stepper motor. This joint has a gear ratio of 3.5 to provide the necessary torque. The body for this part of the robot is split into two parts to allow for easier 3D printing. Joint 4 uses the same NEMA 17 stepper motor as joint 5, but this time there's no timing belt or gears. The shaft of this motor gets connected using a flange coupling to a 3D printed axle that is connected to the body of joint 5. This axle is then held in place through the use of two bearings on each side. Since this is just a prototype, the aesthetics will definitely be adjusted after I verify that everything works. With that being said, let's get this design printed and assembled. Before I begin assembling this half of the arm, I first need to clean up the supports on all the printed parts. Once that was done, I could then start adding the M3 heat set inserts to the parts. I decided to use heat set inserts after a test piece that was secure with empty screws was easily pulled apart. These inserts work great and keep all the parts together and in the right place.
With all the printed parts prepared, I started assembling the entire thing with the stepper motors and other components. This entire assembly acts as a spherical wrist of the robot arm. A spherical wrist is a mechanical wrist design that helps simplify the inverse kinematics of the particular robot since all the rotation joint axes intersect at a single point. When solving the inverse kinematics, I'll be able to break it into two separate calculations. The first set will position the end effector in 3D space, while the second set will put the end effector in the correct orientation. This will be very helpful later on when I start writing code to control the robot. Alright, so now that we have the first half of the arm assembled, it's time to test it. To help me do that, I made this tiny test bench here with a 24 volt 400 watt power supply, uh, a cheap stepper motor driver, the TBB6600, and an Arduino Mega to drive everything. So we're going to be testing joints 4, 5, and 6 in order. For each stepper motor in the joints, there are four wires that need to be connected, and these go straight into the stepper motor driver here. So the way this test is going to work, we have a rotary encoder that's connected to the Arduino Mega. The Mega is running code that detects which direction this switch is turned, and that will in turn move the stepper motor in the corresponding direction. So if we turn clockwise, the stepper motor should also turn clockwise as well. Overall, I'm satisfied with the mechanical design and operation of these joints. The aesthetics could use some work and will definitely be updated as I finish the rest of the design. There are also a few issues that need to be corrected. Joint 4's motor is sticking out too far and needs to be moved inward so that it doesn't interfere with Joint 3's rotation. The motor for Joint 6 also needs to have a bit more space around it so that it can rotate a full 360 degrees without a gripper attached. As we speak, I'm working on printing and designing the remaining joints for the robot, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, share it with a friend, and be sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell to receive notifications for when the next video drops. Thanks for watching.